Action by uh, Timon Hoffman, right, on the challenges and practice of re uh, reinforcement learning from real human feedback. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Timo from the Atomy Munich, and today I will present together with Sarah, also from Munich, uh, on our paper on the challenges and practices of reinforcement learning from real human feedback. I will start by first introducing the, the basic setting of reinforcement learning and reinforcement learning from human feedback, and then later we will dive into these uh, challenges and also opportunities that we have identified. So, reinforcement learning is the basic setting of uh, learning behavior from rewarded interaction in an environment. So we have an agent which is supposed to learn a policy. The agent is repeatedly asked to commit to an action to take in the environment. And the environment responds with the current state of the environment and the reward for the agent. And the agent's goal is to uh, find a policy such that its long-term sum of rewards is maximized. So not just greedily pick an action that has high reward right now, but uh, a sequence of actions that actually has high reward in total. And this works fine if we have this reward function. We can use this to, for example, reach superhuman performance in, in Go and in other games, because there the reward function is very easy to specify. But as we already heard in the, the first keynote, the reward function is usually not very easy to specify in most real-world problems. And one way to tackle this is to uh, Forget about this pre-specified reward function and instead try to do reinforcement learning from human feedback. The main difference in reinforcement learning from human feedback is that we have this human labeler in the loop. We still get rewards, so we can still use the same reinforcement learning algorithms. The only difference is that this reward model, we now have a reward model instead of the objective. So we have a learned function of the human's preferences that gives the rewards instead of an engineered reward function. And we usually learn this reward function by repeatedly asking the labeler a query, feedback on trajectories, so entire sequences of behavior, and getting labels for those queries. The way this looks in practice is usually in, uh, we're using pairwise comparisons. And so you get shown two alternative trajectories. This should be the first one. Unfortunately, the videos don't play on this computer, but imagine that uh, this landing module that you can see a bit on the top is crashing into the ground here. So the goal, of course, is to land safely on the ground. But in the first example, the module crashes. Now we have this alternative trajectory, which the initial frames look equal, but imagine that this one lands somewhat, somewhat safely, although even maybe not perfectly. And even though the second behavior may not be perfect, we can safely say that we prefer the, uh, prefer the second behavior over the first behavior. And now if we assume that the human made this choice with some reward function in the back of their mind, so it's rational with some reward function, we can try to infer this reward function. And this reinforcement learning of human feedback setting has many steps that are sort of executed in a loop. And most of these steps are already quite well studied. So how we select queries to present to the, to the human, how we infer a policy, how we learn from the preferences, uh, we argue that the actual interaction with a human, the labeling aspect, is quite understudied. Uh, this is because, of course, it's, it's hard to do research with re real humans. So what people do instead usually is they pick tasks where we already know what good behavior is, and they just synthesize the feedback and take the human out of the loop for the research project. And we think this is problematic. So I will start by introducing some of the challenges of real human feedback. Uh, the first one is that humans have many biases um, uh, and inconsistent behavior. So a human doesn't really give feedback in a in a perfectly reward rational way. Instead, for example, they, if you look at it on the right, they have an, uh, um, an acquiescence bias, so a tendency to just agree with a default choice. 
And also, uh, you can observe crime scene recency effects. So the effect that they, they increase the tension to what's happened in the beginning and the end. So this somewhat violates our earlier assumption that they give reward rational feedback. This may be caused by unobserved factors in the human's environment, such as distraction, as you can see on the right, the human is quite distracted by the cat, or uh, lack of motivation, or also misaligned causes of motivation, such as uh, monetary factors. And finally, this can all lead to different cases, kinds of disagreement, such as the labeler disagreeing with themselves, with earlier versions of themselves, because, for example, they got distracted. The labeler disagreeing with other labelers due to dis differences in opinion, or the labeler disagreeing with uh, what the researchers intended them to do because, for example, of misunderstandings. And with that, I will hand over to Sarah, who will talk about the opportunity. Thank you. Um, yeah, so while human feedback poses many challenges, um, the very same challenges can also be seen as an opportunity um, for research to further improve the reinforcement learning um, from human feedback method. One way to do so is um, to optimize the labeling task. And the idea here is that we collect more feedback in the same amount of human time. And to achieve this, we can, for example, extend um, the binary query setting that you have encountered before. So that would be that one. And what labelers usually do, and that is the status quo in many reinforcement learning settings, is you have one op option A, and an option B, and then you just decide whether option A or option B is better. However, you can think of many extensions, like you can have a, a button in the middle saying that those options are equally good, or you can have a slide bar where labelers can give quasi-continuous feedback and therefore more nuanced feedback. However, you can also think of very different settings uh, going away from this uh, comparative setting. There is, for example, instructive feedback where um, participants uh, can give demonstrations or corrections. And then there is um, evaluative feedback where people give critiques um, or ordinal feedback. There are also other options um, to optimize the labeling tasks that are um, related to the selection and the presentation of queries. Tang and I, for example, um, explore how clustering might work. So what they do is, they have those different clusters here. They use an algorithm um, to cluster the different queries. And then the participants hover over those different clusters. And then they see an example query. And then based on this example query, they can rank the different clusters, but not the queries. So in the end, you have an example where participants might say that cluster blue is preferred to cluster yellow, preferred to cluster red. We can also um, aid the labeling task overall. So in this setting, um, the labeler is supposed to say whether a self-driving car is behaving in a correct way. And we can aid this decision and make it faster by highlighting objects that people usually use to make such a decision, like this uh, stop sign. And lastly, um, we can leverage um, improve feedback that humans give all the time. So for example, when we're interacting, we use a lot of nonverbal cues, like we have different facial expressions, we use gestures, um, and we have different response times. And while it might be difficult to interpret this, um, this information is readily available and therefore it would be good for the agent to also learn from this feedback. Okay, so given our current work, what are we planning to do or what could be next possible steps? Um, we plan to design a platform to make the collection of human feedback easier. There have been first steps into this direction uh, by Mens et al. in parallel to our work. And we then want to use this platform to uh, generate a systematic overview of the different feedback modalities. Because while going through the literature, we saw that there is no systematic comparison between the different feedback modes. And this would help us to then generate a hands-on guide of how to effectively collect human feedback. And third, uh, we should have more collaboration across disciplines um, like computer science, psychology, and the social sciences because they can learn from each other and therefore improve uh, the human feedback collection. Okay, to conclude, what are our main takeaways? So we've talked about synthetic data 
And we came to the conclusion that while it might be helpful in some contexts, it misses crucial aspects of real human feedback. And it is therefore second, very, uh, yeah, important um, that we uh, yeah, get to know these challenges um, and the opportunities then that we then incorporate them in the this user design um, for our studies. And fourth, more research is necessary to systematically understand which design decisions work best in which contexts. And with that, we thank you a lot. Um, if you have more questions, check out our poster or read our paper, and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. It's perfect in time. <laughs> thank you. Any question? So, Well, I, I completely agree on the fact that uh, uh, having more structured feedback from the human uh, is better than having many, many, many uh, low, low, low information uh, types of feedback. Uh, also, uh, well, in, in, the, in the learning with humans, standard learning with the human setting, you have the active learning setting, right, in which we you know, selectively choose where to ask, when to ask the feedback. So I was wondering whether also in this setting you can have you know, this kind of more active, meaning that not always the reward is from the human, and you will selectively choose when to create an expensive human you know, uh, for, for an informative reward. Um, yes, uh, this, this is an active learning setting. So as you can see here, the reward doesn't actually always come from a human. The reward always comes from the reward model. And the reward model is learned from the human, so there's this interaction. And the human is only asked to label a very small subset of the experiences. And how we select this subset of the experiences uh, is this query selection step, and this is exactly active learning. So we have a huge data set of prior experiences, and we try to commit on some of them to ask the human for feedback for, and which one we select is, is active learning. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Any other question? Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you.